many people my age who are growing conscious of their religiosity while also being libertarian uh, in their belief systems in their principles often struggle to find a balance between the advances of the western world and the wisdom of the indic thought in that sense would you qualify jcw as somebody who mastered this ab- almost a century before even uh, others started exploring uh, that tangent wow you just described why i i wrote the book in one beautiful sentence yes <laughs> <laughs> see when we look <laughs> as somebody you know who's two generations removed so if you think about it i am from the maharaja's grandchildren's generation right and so when i look at his personality and when i look up to history on a on a more general basis we are looking up at history looking for inspirational messages for aspirational figures who show us how it can be done with great grace with great uh, glory right so uh, some, the maharaja's life is very instructional in that re- regard and his life is a wonderful example of how one can be so rooted in in his religion in his values in his beliefs in indic thought and still be open to the vedic uh, call for ano bhadra kravato yanto vishvatah right so if you truly believe if you truly believe in that uh, thought then you should be okay with looking at uh, previous knowledge being fully and and looking at it with great reverence and while you are fully aware of its limitations and so you know he straddled this this polarity is with great ease and his writings also reflect that most of his writings in philosophy are about atman and brahman right two dichotomies on how to right. reconcile with that and uh, how to reconcile a, a forward pushing western uh, industrializing globalizing uh, energy with a uh, a centered you know indic energy that sort of roots you and and sort of firmly establishes you in the glory of the past so how do you live in the current and not be you know uh, and not be how to live this perfectly unboxed life without you know and without actually be selling your soul to either of these uh, hmm. these two vectors in anybody's right. life right so and also he in his life you can see the emergence of the man above the conundrum it's like he said yeah this is my style yeah. and this is how i'm going to do it and uh, i think in an interview with a journalist he said uh, on music uh, somebody asked him is it really possible to like forge the music of the east with the west and mm. uh, it's, you know this fusion is real confusion should we should we can we could we shall we and all of that you know and so he said um it's possible to fuse the music of the east and the west and uh, you can actually extrapolate his answer to like you no know, the sensibilities of the east and the west the philosophies of the east and the west the lifestyles of the east and the west so he said it's po- maybe it's possible to like fuse the sensibilities of the east and the west but it's very important to meet them for who they are first and that's what he did and that's what he embodied and that manodharma as they say right that that sensibilities and sensorialities and, uh, and choices that he made were were embodying that stance and that's the beauty of his personality and that's precisely why his story has to be told for this generation 